mentions Mayan children are taught the power of spiritual energy. They grow up participating in community ceremonies. As they play on the land of their ancestors, they follow in the same footsteps. Their history is imprinted in the land. Parents teach their children the Mayan traditions as they learn to make sacred spirit bundles and practice the teachings and sacred ceremonies. They're trained in the uses of the medicine wheel and are taught to communicate with ancestor spirit guides. It's the Mayan way to connect their spirits to their ancestors' spiritual legacy. Their schools are built on sacred grounds where children are taught how the spirit world and the physical world interlace. The people honor the Mayan elders for the future of their legacy depends on preserving their sacred knowledge and practices. Children learn how the fire ceremonies connect them to the spirit world. The Mayans learn how to invoke the spirits of their ancestors to enter into the fires. For this is how they communicate. After the fire ceremony, young people gather to share their spiritual visions. At a science lecture joined by biologist Rupert Sheldrake and theologian Matthew Fox, insight is given to the inner child awareness of spirituality and the importance to connect to the child inside all of us. The, uh, our capacity for awe, I think, is uh, perhaps the greatest when we're young. Hmm. And that uh, gradually with the onslaught of responsibilities, problem solving, education, and uh, often, unfortunately, religion, uh, that, that childlike capacity in us hmm. gets somewhat squelched. I think, therefore, that mysticism is a daily event for those who are alert and uh, have not squelched their child. Rupert Sheldrake discusses how nature opens the spiritual experience. It's a lot of people who've had these experiences say they've changed their lives. And quite a lot of those experiences are to do with nature. People who've had these feelings at sunsets, in beautiful places, on mountains, with trees, with animals. In a special summer camp designed to bring children in touch with nature and spirituality, Native American Indians work with boys who are wards of the juvenile court. The children's camp is designed to teach troubled youth the ancient ways of the Native ancestors. They learn the importance of working together in harmony with nature and spirit. Native music is played together as the boys creatively express themselves as a unified tribe. The boys are taught how to build an authentic Native American sweat lodge for a spiritual ceremony. As they clear the land, everyone works together with honor and respect for nature. Certain boys are assigned specific work that empowers them. Those who stole in the city are assigned as gatherers of the willows. Those who were violent with weapons in the city are given knives to trim the willows. The very weapon that made them juvenile wards of the court now empowers them within a higher purpose. Some are assigned as tribal leaders to boost their confidence. Others take directions to learn teammanship. Those who threw rocks at cars on the freeway are now in charge of Sweat Lodge rocks. Introverted teens are taught to give spiritual offerings to plants. And those with the rest records as pyromaniacs are now empowered as the fire keepers. The fire now serves as an empowering spiritual force. As the group effort begins to take form, the emergence of the spiritual camp becomes readily visible. The whole tribe experiences a sense of accomplishment with group purpose. The boys begin to feel a spiritual connection as they learn the ceremonial rituals for cleansing and purification. Everyone in the tribe is purified. As a spiritual transformation is about to begin, the boys are instructed on the practices inside the sweat lodge. 
It is their first time they experience a sweat lodge ritual for purifying their mind, body, and spirit. What do you expect to get out of all this? Well, a knowledge that I've been looking for for a very, very long time. It's fun. It rules. I think that there's, uh, I think rituals of any sort, especially um, heartfelt rituals like this guy seems to bring, are really helpful. What I hope to get out of all this is purifying my body, releasing all of my thoughts that I have that are bad about people and about my parents, about my friends at home, and releasing my fear of knowing that I'm not going to screw up again and just releasing everything that I have about myself and other people. I want to like be clean so I can like just start over and I guess be a new, new, new person in spirit and in life. New schools are emerging that operate towards the way children see the world. Non-traditional teaching is catering to kids with psychic abilities, where kids are taught to express themselves in new holistic approaches and experiencing new ways that empower them in an environment where they call the shots. And if they feel like playing guitar all morning, they can, as kids are encouraged to find their creative self. Kaylin Peterson of Sacramento Valley, a Sudsbury school, believes all kids should be allowed to blossom. The constant judging, um, it seems like, you know, if we want flowers to grow, we don't, we're not always pick, pulling them out by the roots and comparing them and um, judging what they're doing all the time. We, we let them go, we trust them to do what they do best, which is to grow. Authors and New Age motivational speakers Jan Tober and Lee Carroll learned of the dramatic increase in psychic children phenomena through their speaking tours. I mean, we're getting letters from people all the time, and one of the most interesting things that's coming forth is that children are telling their parents who they were in past lifetimes. Parents are just um, in anguish over, first of all, how their children do not fit into the school. I taught public school. Um, and private school and what I noticed was that the most capable children were being taken out of my classroom and put in special ed. Berkeley Psychic Institute co-founder Susan Boswick believes sensitive kids with psychic abilities are getting a bad rap in traditional schools because they learn differently. We've gone so far to the left brain that anything right we have to label it ADD. We label it dyslexic. We give it these disses and, and then put it in a box and they go their whole life as a dis. Jan Tober speaks on this growing psychic children phenomenon. We noticed that there was what appeared to be um, a new type of child coming in. We're talking about uh, children who may speak of having angel friends or other interesting spiritual aspects. They're, they're very and they predominantly are right brain. All across America, children are talking about their spiritual experiences. Some children are even drawing pictures of their spirit guides and those who watch over them. There was um, a guy standing by the door. Um, I was really um, sort of afraid of him because he did nothing. He just stood there like um, he was watching um, um, her tuck me in or um, something. After the third time, her coming to me with the lady tucking her in, I decided to kind of check while they were asleep, check the beds to see. And it was, it was tucked in, in between the mattresses. I don't do that. Many times siblings have the same psychic abilities and experience the same phenomena. I went down to the landing and um, I saw someone by the Christmas tree and I thought it was Santa so, um, so, I, jumped, so I jumped up and slapped my hands and, um, and they turned around and, and it surprised me and, um, and they disappeared somehow, I don't know.